walking in the way of Jesus. And deep within each of us is the Spirit of God. On this morning of Thanksgiving, our hearts leap with joy at the wonder at which the world was created. We delight in the gifts the earth provides. We rejoice that we can live, move and work amongst such beauty. We give thanks that even in times we know as difficult, traumatic, life-shattering, when we pause and remember the deep connectedness we have with all creation, even in those darkest moments, our hearts can well up from the depths of gratitude. May we be inspired this day with the beauty of the world in which we live and love, that we, who too often forget to give thanks, might be stirred to living only in thanksgiving for all the passion that life shows to us. Let our lives be turned into gifts to each other, to ourselves, to our world. As those born into light, yet ever seeking it, we pray, saying silently together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Enjoying 
the lovely color around the Cabot Trail. I know that at least one family is, is up there today, uh, Dong Jin and his family. Uh, Dong Jin will be leaving us actually to go back to Korea to go back to work um, in November, but the, the girls and his wife will be staying on until early next year. So they're up enjoying beautiful Cape Rep today. And good morning and welcome to Fort Massey here on the 11th of October during creation time. On this, our Thanksgiving Sunday service, our 26th service online, and also our communion service today. And uh, you'll note that a lot of people will be eating either outside or in smaller gatherings this week in Canada because of Thanksgiving. But for our communion today, uh, we have these little blue purple things of uh, juice. I'm assuming it's Welch's grape juice. On the top, when you peel it, is your bread. Uh, it's like a little wafer. If you've ever been to a Roman Catholic church, you're quite familiar with those little wafers. So that's what your communion will be involved in. If you haven't already picked them up, you should have picked one up. You can pick one up during the service discreetly. There's some up front here at the table, and there are some out in the front lobby on Queen and Queen Street lobby. There are also little baggies that uh, have the gluten-free bread in them. So if you're gluten-free, take one of the little baggies. So thank you all for joining us today on this uh, Thanksgiving Sunday. Uh, my name is Trent Cleveland Thompson, for those of you who are watching online. And uh, hi, come on in, guys. Grab a, grab a juice there as you're walking by. You're going to need one of those. And with me today is Jenny Trites at the piano and organ. Jay Fraser, our soloist, song leader. Bahrain Haguma, our liturgist, and of course Ian McDonald on our camera. And today your ushers were Kathy Evans and Linda McDonald, and Kevin Robarts was down at the other door here, the accessible door. So after the service, a reminder to you to um, be sure and uh, uh, exit at the discretion of the elder who will come and tell you when it's your time to get up and leave and exit out our doors. Um, before we get to church announcements, though, we have a very brief meeting, and I'm going to call upon our chair, who was elected at our annual meeting, David Griffiths, and Linda McDonald will be our, is our secretary, both were elected for all meetings for this year, and so I'd invite them to come forward, David. There's a microphone right here, David, I'll get you to take. And just on the bottom there, you'll see a little button and just turn that on. Good morning. Uh, this is a, uh, I call this congregational meeting to order. Uh, there is one item of business, and that is a, uh, um, a uh, vote to request funding for repair to the roof. Uh, in order of process, uh, uh, we need a member of the congregation to uh, move the, uh, the motion. Third chair, chair, last chair. Uh, <clears throat> then we'll need someone to second it, so we open it up for discussion. Uh, after which, then the discussion will be a vote. And uh, this is one of those items that, whether you're a member of the congregation or if you're somebody who attends regularly, you're also entitled to vote. So therefore, John, did you want to make any comments? Well, um, as um, many of you are aware, the Hunter Church Building Fund um, has an endowment fund of well over five million dollars and they they try to spend the interest each year uh, by giving it out to churches in need who are doing, doing building projects uh, repairing the roofs or steps or what have you normally it has gone to rural congregations only but in the last couple of years as uh, as our monies have accumulated we have to spend them and what a horrible problem to have to have to spend money and uh, we have to spend the money, and so we're giving them to larger projects to many of our city churches. And uh, they go for, to anything from putting your roof on to uh, 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 whatever, new siding, what have you. Anyway, as you all well know, this side of the roof, the south side, was repaired 
in, uh, in the spring and it costs uh, a little bit more than what we've anticipated and budgeted for and so we're going to put in for a grant for $25,000 um, to, to help pay for that roofing and the, the little dormers that are up there that were all restored as well. So we just need a motion to do that because that's what the application requires of us. So, and given the fact that we're all masked, may I ask if whoever makes the motion call out your name as well for the convenience of the secretary? So, do we have a, a motion? Thank Ruth McKenzie? Do we have a second? Pauline, I think, was, uh, was, was first. Any discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed, if any? Motion is carried. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, David. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, folks. <laughs>
we, you can see there's a magic number, 150, 150th anniversary next year for Fort Massey Church. And also the Canyon Church calendar, October the 15th is the deadline. If you want to order them, you need to contact Mary Carmichael, Viola Greer, or the church office. I'll pass it on to them. Um, I couldn't find a picture of the 2021 Canadian United Church calendar, but there's the Anglican one anyway. Um, so there you have it. Um, and Fort Massey, of course, makes it in this year's calendars. All the more reason to get one or two for some Christmas gifts this year. And uh, our great pumpkin carving contest will take place. It'll be a virtual kind of an affair, so you need to make your pumpkins, take a picture of them, send them into the church, so it might be four Saturday at noon, so that I can get them on the slides, and then we'll we'll do a we'll do some kind of a voting. Or I may have to have judges this year. I don't know, but we'll do something. But we do we do want to have it, so we'll we'll be able to put all the all the pictures of your pumpkins up online, and maybe we'll get a few uh, uh, contestants from outside Halifax this year to follow us on on the online services. And of course, lastly but not least, the Brunswick Street Mission Breakfast is also coming up uh, this week, this Saturday at 9 o'clock. Um, it's not too late to get your tickets. There are only $100, and uh, you'll get an income tax receipt for a good portion of that. And of course, you'll have the benefit of knowing that that money is being put to good use throughout the year, helping all those who are most in need of our, in our city. And so if you can help out and do that. If you've never done it before, we encourage you to do it. And you can go online to view uh, the uh, speaker this year, Ron James. And of course, the breakfast, well, it depends on what you're serving at home as to what you'll be eating. You won't be able to complain about the breakfast if you didn't like it because it's something you made. So uh, there you have it. Um, I think those are all of the notices. Marie, I'll allow you to our auditorium. Kevin's going to do a little piece here as well during the auditorium. I'll have the ushers bring the offering plates up. Just a reminder, ushers, there are two plates there, so you just bring one of them up on each table, and uh, when you bring them up, you can just put them on the community table, and we'll leave the other the two remaining for those that maybe perhaps forgot to put them in when they came in and would like to do so after leaving. So. In good times, we give thanks. In difficult times, we give thanks. At night time, we give thanks. In the daylight, we give thanks. At the beginning, we give thanks. At the end, we give thanks. This day, we give thanks for the offering of our gifts. For marvelous things have been done in the, pres in the presentness of God. Because of public health protocols, uh, we are unable to pass the offering plates around the pews. However, you may place your offering in a plate in the center aisle as you enter or exit the sanctuary.
Someone has written that Thanksgiving was a holiday instituted by the Pilgrim Fathers for the benefit of parents whose children survived football season. Football and sports are likely now more synonymous with Thanksgiving than church and harvest. And the origins of this day are somewhat confusing, especially for us in Canada. Ask any school child in Canada to draw a picture about the beginnings of Thanksgiving, and the pictures are likely to include pilgrims and turkeys, maybe even a football game in the background. And what that really shows is the origins of Thanksgiving Day in the United States. A history of celebrations in Nova Scotia by local historian Terry Croft tells us that in Nova Scotia the day has different origins. And he writes, early government officials in British North America used to proclaim special days of Thanksgiving to mark a successful expedition, a discovery, a victorious battle, a treaty, or the recovery from illness of a royal personage. In Nova Scotia, some of these early celebrations included a day of thanksgiving on October the 10th, 1710, to celebrate the British capture of Port Royal from the French, which of course, as you know, was renamed Annapolis Royal in honor of Queen Anne, Anne's royal city. And another in 1763, when the citizens of Halifax celebrated a general day of thanksgiving after the signing of the Treaty of Paris, which gave Canada to Britain. These were the early Thanksgiving celebrations 
in Canada. And later, as New England planters and the Loyalists came north, some of their traditions, of course, came along with them, and harvest celebrations became part of the day. Trying to keep track of when it was celebrated is difficult. It moved around from October to November for many years. And at one point, Remembrance Day celebrations and Thanksgiving celebrations were joined. Thanks was for the armistice, and the day was still thanks for the end of war. In fact, it wasn't until the year 1957, I'm too young to remember that, that the Parliament declared that Thanksgiving would be celebrated on the second Monday in October, a day, quote, of general thanksgiving to Almighty God for the bountiful harvest with which Canada has been blessed. Well, harvest celebrations themselves are, are not uniquely American. Most countries and cultures and religious traditions have marked the harvest with a celebration, a community meal, the gathering together around the world. And so, whatever the origins of our own holiday, whether it Thanksgiving for peace, victory in battle or for the bounty of the harvest, today is Thanksgiving in the year 2020. And we come to worship and to join our hearts and, yes, even our silent voices and reflect. We come to pause and hear the words of the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes, who penned the words, go eat your bread in gladness. Or in the other versions, go eat your food and enjoy it. The writer of this book, of scripture, had been lamenting the futility of life. He sounds, well, almost downright cranky. What's it all about? We might even want to say that he sounds like someone in a, in a midlife crises. I've tried so many things that I can't quite figure out what it's all worth. And finally he writes, enjoy the moment and eat your bread in gladness. He writes much as did the woman from Kentucky who, who wrote that if she had life to live over, she'd eat more ice cream and less beans. I would relax, she wrote, make more mistakes, and dare to be sillier. More ice cream, less beans. She understood the scripture writer's sentiment. Go eat your bread in gladness. Enjoy living more, even, even with today's restrictions. Not bad advice in our normally rushed society. Now we are told that a rabbi once asked a prominent member of his congregation, whenever I see you, you're always in a hurry. Tell me, why, why, where are you running all the time? And the man answered, I'm running after success. I'm running after fulfillment. I'm running after the reward for all my hard work. And the rabbi responded, that's a good answer if you assume that all those blessings are somewhere ahead of you, trying to elude you. And if you're fast enough, you may catch up with them. But isn't it possible that those blessings are behind you, that they are looking for you, and the more you run, the harder you make it for them to catch you. Look around at most people pre-pandemic, most of them were so busy running that they left most of the world in their dust. 
And perhaps they were for looking, they were looking for that magical freedom 55, that year when they would retire and, and lie there on the beaches and a tropical island and play lots of ball. But who could say that good health would still be with them? Their days of good health, maybe now. Prior to this time of slowdown and isolation, they were too busy to even notice it. Or who is to say that they will ever get there, ever have that magical moment someday when they will eat their bread in gladness? The message of Thanksgiving Day is that we should stop now, pause now, eat our bread in gladness today, grateful for today, despite the limits of 10 around the Thanksgiving table. Today is the gift. Today is what we've been given, not tomorrow, not that sometime in the distant future. We spend too much of our time pursuing things from money to instant cures. Too much time living in the future. Now there's another story told about a factory which had a problem with employee theft. Valuable items were being taken every single day. And so they hired a security firm to search every employee as they left at the end of the day. Now most of the workers willingly went along with emptying their pockets and having their lunch boxes checked. But one man would go through the gate each day at closing time with a wheelbarrow full of trash. And the exasperated security guard would have to spend a half hour, you know, digging through food wrappers and cigarette butts and styrofoam cups to, to see if anything of value was being smuggled out. And he never found anything. And finally, one day, the guard could, not, could no longer stand it. And he said to the man, look, I know you're up to something, but every day I check every last bit of trash in that wheelbarrow and I never find anything worth stealing. It's driving me crazy. Tell me, tell me what you're up to and I won't report you. The man shrugged and said, it's simple, I'm stealing wheelbarrows. Rabbi Kushner relates this story and points out we totally misunderstand what it means to be alive when we think of our lives as time as we can use in search of rewards and pleasures. Practically and in growing frustration, we search through our days, our years, looking for the reward for the success that will make our lives worthwhile. Like the security guard looking through the trash in the wheelbarrow for something of value and all the time missing the obvious answer. When you learn how to live, life itself is the reward. And so today we come in thanksgiving for life, for time to spend today with family members around our thanksgiving tables, with our community of faith around our communion table, with friends in our bubble, and even time, oh yes, time alone to think. Thanksgiving is an opportunity to give thanks, even in this time 
of COVID restrictions, to begin to, to realize that life is a gift. Go, eat your bread and gladness today and in all coming days. Amen and Amen. Let us pause in a moment of silence. Let us be thankful for all the blessings we share this day. Let us pray. For all those who have gone before, people strong and brave, willing to put their lives on the line for the causes they believe in, we give thanks. May we too have the courage to step out in faith for that which is true and right. For freedom of speech and of the press, for the avenues open to express ourselves, and for opportunities to effect change, we give thanks. We pray for those who are voiceless victims of unjust governments. For fertile soil, abundant rain, and seasons of refreshment, we give thanks. We pray for those whose land is parched, whose wells are dry, and whose shelves are empty. For our families, friends, and the church, who provide us with nourishment for the journey, we give thanks. We pray for those who are hungry and tired, hopeless and wandering, finding no place to rest. For strong bodies and minds, for opportunities that encourage us to grow and become more the servants of thanksgiving we are called to be, we give thanks. We pray for the sick in body and mind, those living with cancer, those isolated and lonely, and those waiting to die. May we be responsible stewards of our many blessings, people who care for the earth and all its people. May we, may we remain connected with all humanity, even though miles and cultures tend to separate us. May we always respond to Christ's call with the true spirit of thanksgiving. And may our prayers be transformed into action. Amen.
Our tradition says at the Last Supper, Jesus, sharing bread and wine, invited the disciples to share his journey. Here today, through bread and the cup, we renew our journey with Jesus and his disciples. Here today, through bread and the cup, we renew our unity with one another, with all those who have gone before us in this place, and with Christians around the world. Here today, through bread and the cup, we renew our communion with the earth and our interwovenness with the broken ones of the world. Let us pray. In this season of transition, as the, le as the leaves begin their subtle change of color and our hearts cling to the warmth as the, rays, as the days shorten, once again we are reminded that new possibilities can rise from our failures or disappointments, or what has come to an end. We give thanks for all the influences in our lives that have helped us to see beyond the present. They teach us to combine labor and rest. They bring us to the cycles of time and season that sustain us when we're, when we're in need. Amen. We are reminded again of the tradition that surrounds this story. Long ago, on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke. This bread is broken as my body will be. And he handed it to his friends and invited them to eat. Remember all that I have been to you. And long ago on that same night, Jesus poured a cup of wine and offered thanks for it and gave it to his friends. This wine is poured out as my life will be. Remember me and give thanks for all I have given. So now we taste of this same bread and cup. Gifts of the earth, work of human hands. I invite you now to please open up your communion packs and we'll eat and drink together. Bread for the journey, eat of it. In the cup of blessing, drink. Jesus, 
the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and, res and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Blessings be the source of thanksgiving everywhere. Amen. <laughs> 